There is still concern over the lack of a deal on the debt ceiling. That, of course, is about the amount of money the US government is allowed to borrow. That is a self-imposed limit. It's a ceiling. So therefore, without an increase, it would leave the US unable to pay many of its bills. We could see things like social security checks be delayed. Well, on Tuesday, President Biden met with top lawmakers in Washington. They are currently blocking raising that ceiling. Uh, but that meeting wasn't very fruitful. They came away without a deal. Well, let's speak to Richard Duncan now, who's an economist, an author, and the publisher of the video newsletter Macro Watch. Uh, his latest book is called Money Revolution. It's about how to finance the next American century. Thank you for being with us. And let me start with that question. How will America pay the bills if it doesn't come to a deal? Hello, Ben. Well, a good place for us to start is for us to point out that Lifting the debt ceiling doesn't authorize the expenditure of any new money. It simply allows the government to spend the money that Congress has already instructed it to spend. So Republicans and Democrats in Congress pass laws instructing the, the government to, to spend a certain amount of money. But now the government has hit the debt ceiling. So the debt ceiling must be lifted or the government won't be able to, to pay its bills that Congress has already authorized. And um, this creates a, a, a potentially catastrophic situation because if the US government were to default on its debt, uh, it would send the stock market crashing and, and the economy crashing as well. And so people might say, well, why not just raise the debt limit? It's a self-imposed limit. And if there's agreement, you just raise that limit and this problem goes away. But we all know it's not that simple, is it? Well, actually, it, it is. It should be that simple. I mean, generally, I try to avoid taking sides in politics, in U.S. politics. But but this time, the Republicans Republicans in Congress have both the the wrong policy and the wrong approach. Their policy that they're advocating is a return to austerity, and austerity can just lead to more long years of stagnation that would harm the American people and also give China the time that it needs to catch up with the United States economically, technologically, and militarily. Are the so Republicans the not simply saying, Richard, that actually there needs to be a bit of fiscal responsibility, that we can't just keep spending to get ourselves out of crisis, and we need to think, hang on, what can we afford to do and what can we not afford to do? Well, I think they don't have the things in proper perspective. It is true that the U.S. government debt is, is high, is 120 percent of GDP, but it's only half the level of Japanese government debt to GDP. Japan is where the United States is now 24 years ago in 1999. So this is not a pressing crisis that needs some sort of radical emergency intervention on this scale, this wrong approach that I referred to by threatening, essentially holding the, the country at hostage to get what they want and threatening to make the government default on its debt which, as I said, would crash the economy and potentially lead to a new Great Depression. This is all very wrong. Instead of this, what the Republicans should be doing is learning the lessons that President Reagan taught. During the Reagan administration, eight years in office, U.S. government debt tripled during President Reagan's eight years in office. Yeah. It tripled because the U Reagan had the U.S. government invest very aggressively in the U.S. military. And that increase in government debt and that large level of investment led to the economic boom of the 1980s. And it also had the added benefit of bankrupting the Soviet Union and causing the Soviet Union to, to, to disintegrate. They couldn't keep up with our spending. They tried, they went bankrupt, and they fell apart. So this was, this was the greatest Republican policy success of the 20th century. But the Republicans in Congress today insist on ignoring it and instead imposing the diametrically opposed policy of government austerity and stagnation. It's all wrong. Richard, it's really interesting to uh, get your perspective there. Thank you uh, for that. That's Richard Duncan there, economist, author and publisher of Macro Watch. Thank you.